Income tax 2021-2022, marginal and average tax rates software example. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into income tax 2021-2022. Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. You don't need Lacert Tax software to follow along, but some type of tax software is helpful for trial and error, doing data input and looking at the impact on the tax return. In this case, the form 1040. We have our mock taxpayer here, which we're gonna start out as being a single taxpayer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We're gonna be focusing in on the marginal tax rate and the average tax rate. But as we do so, we also want to think about how those rates are going to be calculated and look at the progressive uh, tax system we've been discussing in prior presentations. So some of this information we're going to be getting from the instructions on the form 1040, which you can go to the irs.gov, irs.gov website to find. And then we also have our tax brackets. Now, these, these components in terms of how the tax is actually calculated, another area of confusion. If you ask a lot of tax preparers, they're going to be dependent on the tax return. They have the concept of the tax brackets oftentimes, but starting to think about the relationship between the tax brackets and the tax tables and then the tax worksheets can be a little bit confusing. So remember in prior presentations, we saw that we have a progressive tax system, meaning we're going to be taxed at different tiers typically as we apply the tax calculation. It could be even more complex than that because we could have different things taxed outside of this progressive tax system, such as possibly dividends sometimes being taxed at a different rate and capital gains, for example. Now, when you actually do the calculation from the tax software, it's going to be pulling oftentimes from the tables up to a certain level. So in other words, the tax tables are kind of constructed based on these on on this on these brackets here. So these brackets are used to construct in essence a table which you can find on the instructions on the form 1040. So if you were to actually fill out the tax return by hand and you get to the line item of okay, now calculate the tax, then you're usually going to be using the tables which if you go to the instructions will look something like this. So this is, is meant to basically be easier to find, although it's less easy conceptually to understand what is happening with regards to the rates this way, meaning you're just gonna basically look and see, are we a filer as single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, or head of household, and then we see where our income range is. It is, it, is it in between these thresholds? And then we find the relative amount uh, related to it. That's gonna be the tax calculation that we will be uh, applying out based on the tables. Again, these tables should approximate the brackets of the progressive tax system, but kind of be easier to find if you were to basically do this uh, by hand. So when you're thinking about what's actually being applied, what method are you using to calculate the tax? Usually you're going to be saying, I'm using the tables method. Well, how are the tables derived? The tables are in essence derived from the progressive tax system, which has the increasing tiers of taxes that we have looked at uh, over here with regards to the taxes going up, you know, in a bracket type of format. So that's going to be that's going to be this information. And then if your income is above a certain threshold, if it's above a certain threshold, then you're going to be using the tables. So then if it's above here, then you're going to be using these tables on down below. So if it's over 100,000 or over, use the tax computation worksheet. So in other words, you're going to be then using the worksheet down here, which you would think might look like the progressive tax uh, tiered system that we looked at before. But again, it's a little bit different of the calculation because they're trying to make it as comp as easy as possible to calculate. In essence, not as easy as possible to understand conceptually uh, the tax system. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the taxes, you're saying, OK, I'm thinking about the taxes. I'm thinking about it generally in terms of tables. We also have to think about the different tables that are going to be applied based on the different filing statuses, such as married, single, head of household, and so on. And, and then that's how I want to explain it to people. When I'm actually thinking about how the tax software is calculating the taxes, they're generally calculating the taxes uh, by forming that progressive system into a tax table, which should be easier to draw the number from by just finding the range 
and drawing the number from it. However, it's less easy to see com uh, conceptually, and if you're over a certain threshold, then that's when it's going to be basically using the calculation down below. Now, again, you can see that the different tables are going to be lined up for the filing statuses. So what's what do you need to be dependent on the calculation of the tax? Well, you've got the single taxpayer who's going to have different progressive rates. So you're going to need a whole different set of tables than the married taxpayer, because you can imagine, obviously, that if you're married, you've got two people filing one tax return. So that's going to be a whole different set of uh, progressive income tax tables uh, that are going to be applied there. So you got to say, okay, are they single? Are we married? Uh, head of household and so on and so forth to look at the proper table. When you're looking up the brackets, you need the same kind of thing. If you're thinking about it conceptually, then you have to have, okay, these are the single brackets here and here's the income tax uh, thresholds. And then if you move to married filing jointly, you have different brackets, right? Now you're at the 19 nine at the 10 percent bracket at the upper level versus the 19 at uh, 950. that would of course make sense because to be fair if someone was single and then married and they both worked then you would expect then you got to kind of uh, compensate that with the tables so you got to know what the filing status is then in order to apply the tables the tables then being converted to apply the brackets the brackets then being converted into the tables that are usually going to be used calculating the taxes unless the taxes are over a certain threshold in which case the software is actually going to be using the worksheet so let's let's think about a couple of these just to get an idea of it so let's say okay let's say that our single filer so we're going to sing single filer adam smith made 100,000 w2 income they had just the standard deduction of 12,550 that gives us then the taxable income of the 87 450. So 87,450. That's usually what we confirm on our side. If I was to if I was to kind of confirm my data input, I would look at it in a formula basis and say, okay, wages 100,000. That makes sense. And then standard deduction was this amount. So that gives me I can recalculate quite easily and say, okay, yeah, that's going to be taxable income 87,450. What taxpayers don't usually confirm uh, on their own, oftentimes, or recalculate is the average tax rate of in this case 17.2 uh, what they what they usually do is say okay tax software you help me out from there apply the tables calculate the tax and then we can basically then we can calculate and see what the average tax rate is by dividing this out and picking up the 17.2 so in other words i would then double check this number most likely and then depend on the software to give me the actual tax calculation so if i jump back on over and say all right what's the tax calculation I'm going to go to page two then, and it says 15,150. 15,150. So if that's the case, we can determine then I would put that into my worksheet and say, okay, there's, there's the 15,115. And that would allow us to calculate the average tax here. So the software will also do that. If I go onto the software and I go to my tax summary, I can go back on over and say, okay, and most software has this. This is a LACERT tax software, but no, most tax software has this, which is basically breaking this down into more of an income formula basis. And we'll talk about the formula more in a future presentation. But down below, you could see the calculation of the marginal tax and the effective tax. So now it's calculated the tax, the, the tax being here, the total tax that has an, an underpayment penalty we're not going to take into consideration right now but it has the marginal tax at the 24%. Now, does that make sense? If we think about that, we, could, we can't really say, okay, does that make sense from my tables here? Because it doesn't tell me what the percents are. We've got to jump back to the brackets and say, okay, does that make sense? If they made 100,000, that would put them in between this bracket from 86, 376 to 164, and that's at the 24%. So that's their highest bracket. That's their marginal bracket, the bracket at the margin at the end. What's their average or effective tax? 17.2. Now the 17.2 is calculated. Like we said, the tax is up here. Uh, the total tax is the 15.015 divided by the taxable income. So taxable income 87,450. Now again, remember the taxable income. If I if I there's the 17.2. If I multiply it times 100, there we have it. Now remember the taxable income still a little bit troublesome a little bit confusing because it's after the deductions 
and the deductions are not always things that we used in order to generate the revenue like you would think would be for an income tax. So you deduct things that are personal like mortgage interest and whatnot, which can be significant deductions. So that still kind of skews it a little bit. Also, the credits skew it a little bit. So for example, if I went back on over here and said, well, what if I add, what if I add like a dependent and say there's a child tax credit that's gonna be involved here. Let's put the dependent on the books and say, we're gonna claim a dependent and we're gonna put that on the books, go back to the forms. If I go back to the first page, we'll talk more about doing this later, but just in, in the calculation of the average and marginal tax, what's that gonna do? Because now I've got the same calculation for the taxes on page two here, the 15,015, but then I've got this, this big credit down here, which is a dollar for dollar money back type of situation. So if I go to my tax summary, how's that gonna be calculated? Because it's still, the, the effective, the marginal tax is still at 24, so it didn't change my top tax bracket. And then the effective tax is still at the 17.2. But again, that doesn't, that's not quite, that's a little deceiving because the 17.2 is still being calculated at this tax calculation of the 15.015 divided by the taxable income. And the tax, the taxable income was the 87 here divided by the 87,450. So there's the 17,2. But really, after this credit, and I'm not gonna take into consideration this underpayment penalty, I had, I really had the 12,892 total. I'll add back the underpayment penalty, 227. So it's really 13,119. And if I was to take that divided by the taxable income, 87,450, it's really something like 15% because the credit it was put down here under, and I didn't pay taxes because of the credit. So that also confuses the average tax rate. So that average tax rate is really kind of confusing. But remember the average tax rate is something that you want to talk to somebody about in terms of this is kind of what you're actually paying on average. But the marginal tax rate is often what you're concerned about for decision making because decisions are made on the margin. So if they made another dollar, they're going to be paying taxes at the 24%. So if they're saying, I'm going to make more money next year, then you're going to say, yeah, well, that next dollar is going to be taxed at 24%. But what about the average of 17? Yeah, the average of 17 is what you average pay, but your highest bracket is what you're paying at now. That's at 24%. Now that average tax gets even a little a little more confusing if you were to say, well, what would happen, for example, if I say the income down here was down to like, let's say the income was like 20,000, 20,000 on the income and bring it on back to the forms. So now my taxable income, so now I've got my income at the 20,000, the standard de deduction is 12,5, my taxable income is 7,000, uh, 540 and so my total tax my tax is going to be 748 but I've got a I've got this big credit here which is the the uh, tax credit of the 3600 so that means I'm going to have an overpayment or basically what they're saying is a refund here of the 2852 so I'm actually getting money right? I'm, I'm getting more money than I'm getting a refundable credit. So the taxes here are acting as like a, a benefit for me. And you can see down here that the effective tax is still at 10%. Why is it at 10%? Because it's basically calculating this, this, this tax, the total tax of the 748 divided by the taxable income of the 7450. So there's the 10%, but we're not paying 10%. Not only we're not paying 10%, there's a negative, there's a negative tax, right? Because we're getting more money back below below zero. So really what's happening here is we're getting 2000. So we're getting 2852 divided by the taxable income 7450. So we're receiving, you know, 38%, 38% on it. So that so that's another area where this, this effective tax is kind of confusing because again, the credits uh, throw it off. Obviously that, that effective tax or the average tax isn't really applicable in that case. So those things can kind of throw it off a bit. So let's go back on over and say, okay, let's go back and bring it back to our original example. 
So we're going to go to the deductions and or the dependents and no dependent and bring the wages back up to the 100,000, 100,000. So we'll bring that up. If I go back on over, then we've got our, we're, we're back up to that 15. We've got the marginal at the 24 and then the 17. So we check the 24 on the marginal. If you were to calculate this, this tax, then you could say, well, could I calculate it based on, based on this calculation? We could try, we could say, okay, let's put it on the side here and I'll put my brackets on this area and we'll, we'll try to calculate it using the brackets and then we'll look it up in the table. So if we're in, if we're down here and we're saying, okay, we're, we're within this range, the 24, we'd have to say that it's going to be the 14,751. So 14,751, 14,751. And then we're going to say that we had the, the one, the 100,000 minus the, actually it's going to be the taxable income, the taxable income, which is the 87,450. So we'll take the 87,450 minus, and then we'll pick up the lower level here. We're in this range where the lower level is going to be minus the 86,376 is going to be 1074 at the 24%. So I'm going to say, okay, then we got the 1074 times 0.24, making that a percent multiplying that out this times this and we'll add that up the 14 4 7 5 1 plus the 2 5 8 comes out to 15 0, 0, 9, which is closed not exactly what the tax was calculated here and the tax calculated here because the system actually used the tables so the tables if we go into the tables is trying to trying to put these into ranges so let's find it in that way. So we're going to be in the single column. I got to find the area that's got the the amount of 87,450. So we're looking 87,450. So I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, 87,450, scrolling down. And way down here, we see here we got 87,450. And usually it's going to default to the higher one. So this one's on the mark. So it's on both sites. So it goes to the higher 80, 87,450 here to 87,5. Well, I'm in the single column and there's the 1515 that is being used to calculate uh, the, actual, the actual tax up top. So that's basically how the tables are working. Now, if I was to change it and say, well, what if they were married? Let's add a, let's add a spouse here. So now we've got Adam and Eve Smith, both living in Beverly Hills 90210. They're still earning the 100,000, and so they got the 100,000, but now the standard deductions at the 25 one because they're married. We'll talk more about that later, but now that that would mean that the taxable income is at the 74,900. So now the taxable income has changed because and that nothing else has changed. They're just married now, so that standard deduction if that's what they're taking is basically doubled because there's two people now making their their income different now at the the taxable income 74800 so if i go to the tax summary then and say okay well what's happening down here now they're at the marginal tax rate the highest tax rate is 12 percent does that make sense well let's go to my table here i can't use the single table i got to go to the married table and their income is between is at is at the I'm looking for tax 749 so the 749 should be uh, right right in between here which is at the 12% so it's in between there at the 12% so it's like okay I could calculate that by saying 1990 1990 1990 and then add that to the difference and by the way I'll, I can change the standard deduction in my worksheet and simulate that. So I'm going to say married, married filing joint, married filing joint is going to be that one. So there's, there it is the 74,900. If I go back to my tax software, 74,900, then I rely on the software to calculate it, 8,593. So 8,593. So I'm going to say, okay, there's eight. That's not, that's not where it goes. It goes down here, 8,593. So there's my, my average that has been calculated. I can try to recalculate it with the brackets 
and I'm gonna say, okay, there's the, the 990, and then I'll pull out the trusty calculator, and I'm gonna take then the difference of the 74900 minus, back on over here, minus the lower area, which is going to be the 19901. So I have a difference of 54999 at the 12%. So there's the, so this is gonna be 54999 at 12%. And so there's the 8590. Not exactly this, because this was calculated from the tables. So if I go into the tables, then I'm going to go into the tables and I'm looking for that calc that number of the net income 749 this time. So 749. So here it is. And so and now I'm not in the single column, right? I'm not in single anymore. I'm in married filing joint. So I've got to go into married filing joint. And this is what the software will do for you. 749 here and I'm going to go here and that's going to be the 859 three right is that what it was eight five nine three so eight five nine three there and eight five nine three here so that's how it's the they're actually calculating it in uh the software and then we can see what are the impact on the marginal tax rate so you can see how this gets quite complex even <laughs> even though you can calculate it pretty easily but when you try to explain it to people you say well it comes from the table but what does that mean what's my actual tax well then i have to go to the brackets to tell you what your average tax is but what's what am i going to do if i make more money how's it going to affect me next time well then you go to the effective tax rate or the marginal tax rate i'm sorry then you go to the marginal tax rate